Hawa la wa Spherical rocks <laughs> Welcome to part 31 in the investigation of El Presta Wan Wang Khan Priest King Ha Khan Presta John We've been surfing the wave, we've been surfing the wave live every night, Monday through Friday, man, 10 to, we say 10 to 2, but you already know, man, it's 10 to 3, 10 to 4, 25 to 30 hours of live recon, man, the family's in the chat room, man, much a hive to the drop chatter, chat, chat, chatter, chat, 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 chatter, we just surfing the wave all night long, don't mind us. Kerumeyu, Kerumeyu, aha you, what it do? Live from Costa Rica, live from Costa Rica, dragging eggs everywhere. Oh, they just fell off of some mountain or cliff in a spherical form. Do you see them hatching, man? Do you see them? Do you see them hatching, man? Costa Rica. Love to Urban Reed, we're just talking about the sprouting sea. Do you see them hatching, man? And what happened to that one, man? Do you think it's play, play, man? Caramel, you, we're just talking Costa Rica, man. Spherical boulders, huh? Stone spheres, Costa Rica. I have to carry me. You, we just surfing the way. Right here, we're live, man. All right, ten to two, <laughs> ten to three. Yeah, you know I mean, one of those. Now we're going to try to make it just 10 to 2, cut it off so I can try to get some rest, man. And, um, you know, a good four hours would be great. we just been going in, man. we just been going in because there's no hijacks allowed, yo. You come over here, you click this play or you click this link up here if you just want to listen live. It'll take you to a screen like this. All right. We got some logic playing right now so you can just kind of Still surf the wave and still have your live listen link open up, man. Get that drop, man. Let go. This is where you come for it. Three, two to drop ready. Your home of drop nation, man. We've been patiently waiting. Getting that healing due every night, right here, <laughs> live on the radio, enjoying the flow. Give us that a hop, yeah, give us that a hop. Love to a turtle gang, man, that walk a flock ain't no joke. Oh, man, Chef Candy been dropping that drop, man. A hop to the Aqua Thian for tuning up Chef Candy, because she been dropping that drop. You know, she's from Trinidad, so she just, man, like, whoa, there's something called the Dragon Mass. They also call it the Devil Mass. And you'll see why, because they want to slay the dragon. They have a whole dance. 
I'm going to show you right They have a whole dance about slaying the dragon in Carnival. So what's the energy behind Carnival? You come to the side, you dig on it, man. The devil, the accuser, as the great power of evil has been much depicted in religious and secular culture and art as a spirit of power of evil. Though sometimes used for minor demonic spirits, the word devil generally refers to the prince of evil spirits. And as such takes various forms in the religious religions of the world. In traditional Trinidad Carnival, the Devil Dragon Mass, I, I'm not making it up, may be divided into three main groups of characters, the imps, the beasts, and the rulers. So these are their characters of demon characters, the imps, the king imp, Artan, Argentania, the master of ceremonies. The king imp may wear a crown on his head to distinguish himself from other imps. An imp is a character who wears a pair of scaled pants or candle over his skin tights. <laughs> you got the axe man, the bell man, the scale man. They got the beast, king beast. Here's where we got the king. Free Phineas. The king beast wears a large dragon mask with a protruding tongue. His costume is covered with the head to tell in scales of different sizes. Man, alright man. You come over here, you get all this drop. They even got the gentleman Jim, the prince of darkness. You don't, look, this is carnival man. This is carnival, right? I told you, Carol May, you got the drop. You go get that El Peru Waka. We're just talking Waka Flocka. <laughs> it's breaking down into the Khan Dynasty in Peru. Khan, Peru, Khan, Peru. What they call Snake, we know is Dragon. Priest kings have dragons. How do we know? Found a great PDF for the Book of Jubilees. Go get that drop, man. We'll be in black robes. Chef Caddy digging on it. Man, the wifey is tuning up. Black robes. We'll get some of this connected to Phineas and Coba and the Jesuit. The whole. Who wears black robes? Who wears black robes when you go to court? What order are they serving? Yeah, they've been called black robes well, since the 1600s, 1700s called black robes and now we don't call them black robes no more the jesuits and the inca now caramel just dropped this too and we're dropping so wifey's pulling up black robes and caramel is dropping jesuits at the same damn time do you know what i mean by surfing the wave and the healing dude come on man caramel you Got some dragon drive by the homie Eye of a Dragon Homicide 540, man. You've been seeing him in the comments for a long time, but the bro surfs the wave on a nightly basis on TDR, man. The drive radio, he's in here, man. Hold up, man. Because y'all think it's play play. Let's go in the drop chat. Let's grow. Let's go in the drop chat. Let's see what kind of drops been going on nightly in the drop chat. Hold up, man. You gotta sign. I mean, if you don't, if you don't got the drop, you better register on the site to make sure you got the recent password. Cause I keep telling y'all it's gonna change, and it will, <laughs> and it will, and it will. Yeah. <laughs> Silver Surfer. We were just talking on the Quicksilver in the balcony. Silver Surfer. Yeah, man. Silver Surfer is Aqua Larissa. <laughs> She's in there all night. We just having fun, man. Shabbata, Shalom. The sister's giving us beautiful portraits of her downtown sunrise. I can stay here all day 
and Shabbat. Just listen, right? Halal Hawa for the day of rest. Hawa does all things well. Ain't that beautiful? I think I'm going to leave my porch and go sit in the park in the field and vibe to music. No recon. Just rest. Hey, this is what's going on. This is all last night. All this is last night. This is all last night, man. Man, this is incredible uh, from the uh, Game of Thrones where the, uh, you know, lady here clearly says the red comet means one thing. Everyone's trying to say, what's the red kachina? What's the red comet? Comet, meteor, dragon, right? The red comet means one thing, boy. Dragons. Yeah, the red comet means dracons landing. Yeah. Dracons landing. Yeah. Oh, man, we just surfing away. <laughs> so all this, I mean, I haven't even, I got to go to the archive messages just to get to the rest of last night. We got books dropping in real time. Beautiful man, Armani Bushman has a reading for us. The, the brother's reading Annals of the Coxy Quails. He's going to start his own. Uh, he got his own slot starting uh, next Thursday, 8 o'clock Eastern time called the Campfire of just readings. Uh, you know, beautiful readings with a great indigenous flow, man. So that's my bro Bushman, Manny Galiraki. All this is happening right in your face, boom. The Wadadra, Angel Eagles Dracon. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah. We're just talking Leviathan. I'm still on last night's show. I'm, I ain't stopped. I can do this all day. This is all last night's show. Much of hop to soul and fruit, man. Tie paka, <laughs> tie battle, man. Jay Stu was in the building, and K Stu was in the building. Much of hop to the Stewart family. Support the Stewart family right here. You click that link, man. Much of hop to the tribe so far. You, you have put that a hop to Jay Stu. So far, you have put that a hob to J. Stu and their beautiful Yapa Hadassa. Much a hob to Roderick Lee and Priscilla Jones, Larissa Freeman, Tyana Battle, Miss D in the Copper Color Awakening, Michelle McKett. Everyone dropping anonymous. Much a hob, Truth Lover Ventures, Sister Jazz, Priscilla Jones, all given to the stewards because they opened the door. Much a hob to the stewards. Let's go. We're just talking drop chat, so come in here, vibrate, you know what I'm saying? Come in here, vibrate, and come correct, man. Come correct. Hijack free, because we got guardians on the wall. Believe that. Believe that. This is Preston John 31. Can we have some fun? We made it to 31. Can we have some fun? We just a home of drop nation. And you got Preston John 1 through 30 all right here lined up for you, man. It's all the way to 30, man. So get that drop. Ah, we're having a good time. Let's go. Oh, you know, I want to show you something real quick, man. Because y'all think it's play play. Yeah, this dragon sighting reported in Eastern Caribbean. Chef Candy got the drop. What did she say? My sister Kara, Kara J got the drop. Cuba, Dominica is assigned to North America. This is crazy. I'm just surfing the wave on the homepage, man. And yes, all this has to do with Preston. This is out the new Oxford American Dictionary, second edition. And most editions afterwards have a section called Countries of the World. In it, Cuba is assigned to North America. Cuba is in North America. Dominica is assigned to North America. Dominican Republic, North America. Haiti is assigned to North America. Jamaica to North America. Trinidad to South America. Overall, the Caribbean islands. And those from there are indeed true indigenous, what they're calling more ish. We know our indigenous dodge the hijack. However, many of the Caribbean islands are under false independence and sovereignty because many of them are externally free, but behind the scenes they are still under British Empire governance and rulership. And all these 
great drops, man. All these links go with it, man. Much a hop to Car J. Give it that a hop, man. The family is a bunch of researchers and reporters, man, putting it right here for you, keeping that water flowing. We'll be getting into this book drop by Eye of a Dragon, man. Much a hop, Eye of a Dragon, man. We're keeping that water flowing. We're just talking Shangri La. And this is that little ritual dance, man. You're going to see just a little sneak peek, a sneak peek of this carnival. A little snippet. So you know it ain't no play play. Okay, enter Phineas, a green dragon. Hmm. We're back in that Dracopedia, man. Just talking Phineas, man. Free Phineas. Free Phineas. Free Phineas. We're talking the Acadian National Dragon Preserve. We're talking the coastline where all these eggs are popping up all over, even in Costa Rica, right? Even in Costa Rica, right, right. All up the coast, right. Phineas, who has been living in a small, cramped concrete pit for 70 years. Today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. Today, Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. In 1972, the newly formed World Dragon Fund used Phineas as their poster dragon to raise funds. The newly formed World Dragon Fund used Phineas as their poster dragon to raise funds for the protection or slaughter or enslavement of dragons. In 1978, a new dragon enclosure was built for Phineas. You think this is a game? Go get that previous drop. All the uh, Cloud Forest drop, one and two. You see this ain't play play. I go into the Fort Tryon National Park. Before leaving our expeditions to see the Acadian green dragon. Why is that dragon green? And in Trinidad Carnival, it's the Green Dragon, it's Phineas. Concial and I made a stop to see the country's most famous dragon in captivity. The most famous dragon in captivity, Phineas. Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan is home to Phineas, a 140-year-old Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York for over a century. And it goes into the P.T. Barnum, which the P.T.'s name, the uh, benefactor, it says the last dragon was donated to the New York Zoo in 1891 upon Barnum's death and named Phineas in honor of his benefactor. <coughs> named Phineas in honor of his benefactor, huh? Phineas, according to the Hebrew Bible, Phineas or Phineas was a priest, was a priest. All oh, his benefactors named Phineas. Is it a cover up? Is it a coincidence that his benefactor is named after a priest of Israel? A priest during the Israelite Exodus journey? The grandson of Aaron and son of Eleazar, the high priest. Hakan, the high priest. Hakan, free Phineas. Oh, 
Oh man, it gets better. It only gets better with time. It only gets better with time. So you got a high priest named Phineas. Now you want to tell me. Now you want to tell me that he's just named after his owner. This is a noble, a noble creature who's in captivity with you, Negro. You're in captivity. Phineas is in captivity, named after a high priest of Israel. Kendrick Lamar just said he's an Israelite. Whose dragon is this? And who is this? Free Phineas. We're just talking Phineas. Phineas is the only great dragon alive in captivity in America. Right, right, right. So you mean if I, you know, in case that didn't exist, let me just say, if I want to say who's Phineas and Tryon State, Tryon Park Zoo, will they still have a dragon or will they have a... Uh, Say hello to Phineas. Now he's a rhino. Now he's a rhino. Is this the same rhino? Is this the same rhino that they used to start the World Dragon Fund in 1972? Did they use a rhino to start a World Dragon Fund? In 1972, the newly formed World Dragon Fund used Phineas as their poster dragon. Did they use a rhino? to raise funds and in 1978 they built a new enclosure for Phineas really really we're just talking for a try say hello to Phineas see if there was no if there was no dragon fund if there was no World Dragon Fun. <laughs> Maybe they can get away with a rhino. But because they put a rhino in the picture, that lets me know they're covering this shit up. Or else there would be no Phineas the damn rhino. I'm just talking Phineas. According to the Hebrew Bible, Phineas was a priest. A priest. These are high priests, man. Get the drop. High priest. Eleazar. Going to the book of Joshua. Phineas son of Eleazar appears again in the book of Joshua. And the tribes of Reuben and Gad together with the half tribe Manasseh depart to take possession of their lands beyond the Jordan. Joshua, huh? Eleazar rocking with Joshua, huh? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Phineas, Phineas, Phineas. Phineas, Phineas, Phineas. This is getting good. This is getting good. Are you putting it together? Are we putting it together? Phineas has been in captivity. He's the only great dragon alive. Let's go back. At some point you gotta say When they talk World Dragon Fund in 1972 And it's traded today on the New York Stock Exchange Under TDF And now you have the Templeton Dragon Fund TDF on the New York Stock Exchange And they just told you they started the World Dragon Fund In 1972 Did they use a rhino? Say hello to Phineas. This is Hijack Phineas. This is Hijack Phineas. He over here talking to Hijack Phineas. Is he talking to Phineas? I'm out of here, man. I'm out of here. Let's go. Yeah, we're just getting our war music going, man. Because we're going to get back in these cloud forests. Sometimes you might have to go, you know, to the Madeira Islands. Why? We'll see. We'll see. We're just surfing away. Why is there a green dragon, Phineas, in the carnival being portrayed?
Enter the Dragon Slayer. This is the energy of the Dragon Slayer. Here we go. Okay, here comes a duel. Look at how the story is playing out. They're not fucking around. They're not fucking around. So here's the dragon, or excuse me, the dragon and the dragon slayer. So the energy of the dragon slayer that eats the dragon, the Ethiopians in Western Europe that are eating the dragon, getting life. Here's the dance and here's their story. So the devil can't be the dragon fool if the dragon, the dragon's fighting the devil. And in Revelations 12, when the dragon's ready to devour the woman's child, it's ready to devour the devil, Zeus, Jupiter being born out of her womb. The dragon is slaying the devil because the devil has slayed the dragon. <laughs> oh, I wish we had more time. We could watch this all night. We could watch this all night. Love to Chef Candy for that drop. You know what I mean? I mean, we can't make this up. Paku got some great drop, man. The Remembrance Indigenous Conductor. Songs 44, man. Yohanneton Hebrew Prince got some drop. I want to get this on the dismount, man. That'll be beautiful. Beautiful. Go get this drop. Stop what you're doing and get this drop. Matter of fact, y'all want to get like a couple minutes. Let's just get about a minute or two, man. We're about to go hard and just press the John. We're just getting set up. We're watching the dances. We're watching the dances. Yohanatan, my bro, Aki, Hebrew prince and family. His family is Yapa. Yapa means beautiful. Let's get a couple minutes so you can know about these uh these beautiful princesses. We're training up let's get it So, 
Yeah. What we want to do today is, first of all, we want to we have a special segment about ensuring that we impress upon our children, impress upon our kings, our our kings in training, our princesses in training. We want to ensure that they are getting the word, make mm-hmm. sure that they comprehend who they are and who they are. So to start it off, we're going to have my four-year-old, my four-year-old princess, she's going to bring to us the healing. The healing will come. We will, we will come from chapter 117. To get to it. And we're going to start at verse 1. Now remember, this is, she's four years old. My, my princess is four years old, and she's going to break this down for us. Are you ready? Ready. All right, come on into the mic. Go ahead on and give us the healing. Chapter 117. Go. Hello, world. All you nations that stole him, all you people, for his loving commitment is my over up. And the truth of who of your hawa is everlasting. Hello hawa. 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 Oh, wow. oh, that's my four-year-old. Yeah. She's very excited. She did such a wonderful job. Wonderful job. And now what we want to do is we want to move in to Deuteronomy or Deuteronomy chapter 6. But however, before we get into chapter 6 and let my, my six-year-old read, and I promise you, this is not coercion. My six-year-old, this is what we do. We teach our children how to read. We teach them how to recite. We teach them how to learn. Okay, so that's very important. But before we do that, we're going to let my four-year-old speak one more time. Coming from coming from Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. And it talks about training up a child. Okay, baby, go ahead. Train up a child. Train up a child in the way he can go. And when he goes old, he'll not depart from it. That's right. Did y'all hear that? Say it again, my baby. Wow. Can I be child in the way he just goes, and when he goes to the hell, not the far from it. That's right. It's all about training up our children. Halel Hawa. Halel Hawa. Good, good. Now, we're going to get into the quick lesson today. We're going to get into the lesson. Remember, remember, family, this is all about our children. This is not just about the adults. It's not just about us. It's about making sure that we get to the next generation. Okay. So with further ado, we're going to jump right on into this. And we're going to read the Badim chapter 6. Okay? And we're going to stop at a, at a couple of places. And we're going to do some commentary. But after we do that, we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay? So let, let's dive into this. And I'm going to turn this over. Turn this screen a little bit so that my six-year-old, my six-year-old princess, can also, can also uh, read and put our input into it. Wow. Okay? And Throughout the segment, we're going to allow my four-year-old princess to make sure that she recites to us Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, so that we can keep in mind what we're trying to do and the importance of it. Okay, so, princess, will you please start the reading of the body, chapter 6, starting at verse 1. And this is the command. The laws and right rulings which Hawal, your Elohim, has commanded to teach you to do in the land which you are passing over to possess, so that you fear Hawal, your Elohim, to guard all his laws and his commands which I command you, you and your son and your grandson and your grandson and your grandson. Now let's back up here. I want you to read verse 2 again. Read verse 2. Go ahead. So that you fear Hawa, your Elohim. Do what now? Fear Hawa, your Elohim. Go ahead. To guard all his laws and his commands, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, and that your days be prolonged. Stop. So wow. now, as you heard, my six-year-old, she said that you and your son, and your grandson all the days of your life and that your days will be prolonged a- wow you know what i'm talking about do you know what i'm talking about pure water pure water 
pure water flowing. Yahanatan, Yehanatan, Yehanatan, Hebrew Prince, train up a child. You see what's flowing on the drop radio, man. This is your drop. This is your healing, dude. And this is your water. And with that, we ready to go. We ready to go. Cause we just talking Hawaii. Go subscribe to Yohana to Hebrew Prince. The bro is growing every day. Every day. We're just talking Hawa. A highly prominent name is that of Hawa. It was the most ancient name for the creator. And it's easily identified from the Hebrew verb meaning to form or to mold or to shape. When the Israelites were given Yahweh, now they put the Yah in front, right? We dodged a hijack during the Exodus. They call it a new name. Is Yahweh a new name? Does your creator need a new name for you? Or do you have an ancient love song? They forgot to get, they forgot the old Hawa. They no longer remembered Hawa. They no longer remembered Hawa. Wild the creator. Wah hawa. They no longer remembered Hawa. El Hawa names are scattered around the world. And you see them popping up everywhere. Ha wu, ha we, ha wa, ha wa. Alright man, so much of the Hebrew prince, you how to die, eh? Man, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dropping that. Dropping real time. Chef Candy also dropped this link. Where it's literally, you know what I'm saying, showing you the same thing. These are the imps. All right. You see about slaying the dragon, you see how he got the dragon like around like by some type of, you know, rope. See how he got the dragon tied down on a rope. He's still a green dragon, right? He's still a green dragon, right? Free Phoenix. As long as we talking green dragons, we saying free the Draco Rexes. Free Phoenix. In captivity today in Fort Tryon, man. This is real simple when you get to it. It gets real simple. We're simplifying it in real time. Who is Prester John? All that to get to Prester John, huh? Why? Why? Let's read. This is a great book called Shambhala, The Fascinating Truth Behind the Myth of Shingra La. I have a dragon hit us with this. I mean, this all goes down in the chat room, let me tell you. Some esoteric societies have always been aware of this Gnostic substratum, substratum beneath the orthodox veneer of history. Wow, that's a fancy word of saying Phineas, priest king, priest Eleazar. Thus the Templars. We're back in the Templars already. Remember, Preston John said, watch out for those treacherous Templars. He wasn't talking about all Templars, but the treacherous ones. Because Preston John is a Templar. Preston John is there for the nucleus of what this Templar is. But they're protecting the Holy Grail. And who's the Holy Grail? Who carries the function? Who carries the function? Well, you go look that up. We got it last time. Put in Holy Grail, Preston John. See what you come up with. We came up with before with the docs that the Holy Grail is literally the function of the priest king. Whoever is carrying the function of the priest king is the Holy Grail worthy of protecting by the Templars. 
whose order was founded in Palestine or Dodge the Hijack. We're talking the America in 1118. We're known to have believed secretly in the unity of all bloodlines, hmm. all races and religions, the unity. Okay, we're just talking unity, right? We're talking Israel, right? We're talking the Holy Grail, right? And to have practiced spiritual techniques and rituals that bear many points of resemblance to ones from Asia. So, you know, this is a, this is a Shambhala link that's going to want to combine all this with the Tibet, Tibet, India, India. But we dug on India. We know we're in the farthest India, so we can build from here. We're in Pressure John 31. We ain't got to slow down too much. So it is by no means possible that the medieval knightly orders of Europe, ambitious to extend the domain of Christendom, were aware of and even had certain convert or covert connections with the initiatic center of high Asia for their own religious purposes. Listen up. Who is Prester John? Thomas believes so. He points out that in 1184, Wolfram von Etchenbach, we're about to get the Wolfram von Etchenbach. We dropped the book already. Uh, they have it right here, the Tutorial. Tutorial. We also have one called the, um, what's that? The, uh, Parsifal, Parsifal, the Knights, the Knight Templar, and Parsifal. Parsifal is another name where you find Prester John because they had to Europeanize him and put him in this story called Parsifal or Tutorial. And sometimes Prester John is Parsifal, depending on who's writing it. Sometimes Prester John is like the son of Parsifal or or or, or grandson or nephew. So Parsifal is connected to Prester John, hip and hip. That's also being found in the book Tutoro, a troubled door of Knight Templar who summarized, summarized the Holy Grail. Holy Grail is Prester John. Legends in the Romance Tutoro hinted at the spiritual link between the Holy Grail and Asia described the Grail as a stone, right? But we know more than that. But there is a Grail stone and there is a stone even being mentioned in the Papuva about a, a stone that they were given by their ancestors, right? I mean, what does that got to do with the Ark of the Covenant? And this stone is called Grail. Was Etchingbach Thomas as speaking of Shambhala and the Shintana, Shintamani stone? In the Meet Meister Singer's Tale, the hero Parsival, here we go. So we got the Parsifal book. We're going to get into that in Preston John 32. Carries the sacred cup or stone to Asia, to the kingdom of Totoro. A priest king. A priest king who bears a strong resemblance to the phantom emperor of Asia, whom Christians called Preston John. Trust John plays everywhere. And if you're not looking for your priest king, then you're play playing. If your direction isn't toward your kingdom, toward your priest king, ha kem, toward the function or the energy of priest king and what it's really about, you think it's in two dimension, you think you could just read it off a page, you think they're going to give it to you in English, they're going to give you the drop, you might have to keep digging, keep digging, keep digging. Like Shambhala, the mythical kingdom of Prester John was a country full of marvels. So again, this is what they're calling the Phantom Emperor, Emperor of the Three Indias, Prester John. And who, like Totoro, lived for about 500 years. Really? You're telling me in a separate book that we never heard of about Shimbala and Totoro and Parsifal. You're telling me that you're telling me, us, that Preston John was about 500 years old. And all we got to do is say, did a black man discover the fountain of youth? Who 
Ooh, it's pressed to turn. I mean, it's a decent question, right? Who is your priest king? Who has the function? The order? And how old again did Preston John say he was when he took six baths in the fountain of youth? Going into the holy land? Might have to get that letter again, huh? Might have to get that letter, Preston John, huh? Let's just get it here. To account for Preston John's age and work around it, Robert Silverberg writes in his 1972 book, The Rev of Preston John, that the legend of the fountain of youth in Ethiopia, the fountain of youth. Why, when they eat your dragons, do they get younger? Hold that thought. The realm of Preston John that the legend of the founder of youth in Ethiopia was blended in as an interpolation. Here's the version tra transcribed from a later, from a slightly later manuscript in Silverberg's book. Whosoever, whoever drinks of its water, living wata, hawata, three times without eating. You got to fast, you got to drink of the water three times will have no illness for 30 years. And when he has drunk of it, he will feel as if he has eaten the finest meat and spices, for it is full of Hawa's grace. A person who bathes in this fountain, whether he be a hundred or a thousand years old, it must have had a thousand year old people, right? Will regain the age of 32. Know that we, the whole tribe, we, Priest King Prester John is telling you, know that the whole tribe, we were born and blessed in the womb of our mother, how long ago? 562 years ago. And since then, we have bathed in the fountain six times. In other words, Prester John was letting readers know that by the miracle of the fountain of youth, he was 562 years old and going strong. Okay. Phantom Emperor Prester John lived for about 500, and 500 years. By the miracle of the fountain of youth, he was 562 years old and going strong. Prester John lived for 500 years, about. Now, where's these dragons got to do anything, huh? You think you could find any drop that has Presta John, Shimbala, dragons, and the Knights Templar drop all in one paragraph? Well, let's read it. In the book called Shimbala, The Fascinating Truth Behind the Myth of Shangri La by Victoria LePage. We're on page 216. 2 plus 1 plus 6 is 9. 216 times 2 is 432. We're in the frequency. Let's get it. I said turn to page 216. 2 plus 1 plus 3 is 9. We're in the frequency. Uh, let's get it. Like Shambhala, the mythical kingdom of Preston John was a country full of marvels. It was said to lie in the Gobi Desert and to possess a fountain of external youth from which all the inhabitants could drink. All the inhabitants could drink. Know that we were born and blessed in the womb of our mother 562 years ago and since then we have bathed in the fountain six times and this was by the 1100s how many times have they bathed how many times have we bathed fountain of 
fountain of external youth from which all we all the inhabitants could drink thus banishing sickness and old age only the purest souls could live in Prester John's land only the purest souls could live in priest king's land you have to choose up where crime poverty and injustice were unknown a magic mirror a magic mirror enabled the king to observe everything that happened in the world you think it's play play right oh yeah right <laughs> that sounds like a movie hmm well, you know they turned everything into movies right because when we dig on black robes it's a historic novel it's a historic novel about these Jesuits. Do we think on black robes? There is a film on it called Black Robe. Do you think it's play play when we dig on black robe? Oh, it seems like a movie, right? Let's get it, man. Let's get it. Only the purest souls could live in Prester John's land. Only the pure souls can live in Preston Town's land. Oh, man. Let's get it. I don't even want to go to war right now in Japan. I don't even want to go to war right now. I just want to, I just want to float, man. I just want to float with y'all. Because they've been eating our dragons. They've been getting life. We've been telling you what? Free Phineas. They got a green dragon. You know, dancing around Carnival. You're reading a, these documents, like this hard to find document right here called Prester John and the Gypsies, David J. Nemeth, and Central Michigan University doing drop on what? The problem of gypsy prehistoric, prehistory between the Dian Danube and the Indus River circa AD 1400. Wow, uh, wow. And you dig, you dig, you dig. Bang. There is an interesting paragraph written in the 13th century by the English philosopher Roger Bacon. Now, they're going to mention another Bacon, Francis Bacon. And you tell me what they all have to do with each other, huh, Bacon, huh? about some exotic strangers in Western Europe called Ethiopians. What? You mean there's not just an Ethiopian in one place? I mean, every, all these dark regions are just a generic term for dark people. They call Ethiopians in the Greek. The reptile that the Ethiopians in the Greek eat is the dragon. The reptile that these Moors in Western Europe are eating is your dragon. The Moors in Western Europe are eating your dragon. And what happens when the alchemical dragon slayer presents your opposite? And they slay your alchemical dragon. The alchemical serpent slays the alchemical dragon with its opposite. The reptile of the Ethiopians, Moors of Western Europe, eat is the dragon. Free Phineas. Why do they eat Phineas? Why do they eat the dragon? For it is well known that wise Ethiopians, huh? How did they get their wisdom? How did they get their intellect? How did they get their youth? How did the Moors of Western Europe get their intellect, wisdom, and youth? It is well known that wise Ethiopians have come to Italy, Spain, France, and England, and those countries of the Christian where there are what? Good flying dragons. You still think it's play play? Do you think it's play play? 562 years ago. He was 562 and going strong. They're eating your dragons in Western Europe. While they're uh, putting their papa bull and 
and, and on that bullshit, right? You know what I'm saying? In those countries of the Christians where there are good flying dragons and that by occult arts, which is magic, which they possess, they drive the dragons out of their caves. And they have an art of preparing their flesh, free Phoenix. And they partake of it against accidents of old age. Against accidents of old age. What does that mean? That means they get life. This is their fountain of youth by eating you. You are the Drakan. Wow. You are. <laughs> You have it all in you already. When the most I breathe, when you got that breath, you have all energy. These energies that were created before you by your creator are here to guard you, guide you, guard you. You go to 1828 Webster Dictionary, what happens again? In case we forgot, you look up dragon. Or you get the whole... You know, winged, all right, cool. Then you get the meteor, a fiery meteor. Number three, a fierce violet person, male or female. What a male or female person, a man or woman is a dragon. A fierce violet one, the one you're fighting is fierce and violent. And they are a dragon. Hmm. I just want you to sit with that. I want you to sit with this definition of a dragon because if I said what's the definition of a dragon would you say a person male or female that's fierce would you say that would you say a meteor and when you look up Prester John or you just put in Prester priest what do you get a meteor what's a meteor dragon what a fiery shooting meteor they call them stars with the tail right so you telling me prester priest king prester prester john is also represented as a meteor yes dragon yes because when they when they came it did what create such violence for who the hijack that a collision is set on fire who's getting set on fire by this collision the hijack Priest, Priest King Prester is a hijacked slayer. The dragons are hijacked slayer, which is why your dragons are in captivity today. And why we keep saying over and over again, man, in case you don't get the memo. Free Phoenix, who's in captivity today, the last great dragon, and why they're dancing around as green dragons. Because they're doing what? They're eating your dragon. These Ethiopians of Western Europe, Ethiopians, right, have a way of preparing their flesh. They drive the dragons out their cave and have an art of preparing their flesh and they partake of it against accidents of old age. They get younger and prolong their lives and make their intellects subtle, meaning super smart beyond all estimation. It is not necessary to speculate here that these so-called Ethiopians were in fact Egyptians. Gypsies, Egypt. What do the West European more have to do with Egypt? By permission of the Pharaoh, right? A Mexum. It's all the Confederacy. But to explain part of the reason why these Egyptians were well regarded and well treated on their first arrival, we can now turn our discussion of Prest Prester John, Prester, Meteor, Dragon, Meteor, Dragon. Why were these Egyptians so well regarded by the Western European in the 14th century while they're rolling up on you? Why was Egypt so important to these Moors? And why were they well regarded and working as a team in the 14th century? You better turn your discussion to Prester John, the person, the letter, and the legend. We're just talking patriarch. Go back, man. Y'all think it's play, play. Like Shambhala, the mythical kingdom of Preston John was a country full of marvels. It was said to lie in what they're calling the Gobi Desert and to possess a fountain of eternal youth. A fountain of youth. 
and they partake of it against accidents of old age prolong their lives. So while you have a real fountain of youth, they eat you and your dragons to get what? Younger against accidents of old age. Possess a fountain of youth from which all inhabitants could drink, thus banishing sickness and old age. Only the purest souls could live in Preston John's lands where crime, poverty, and injustice were unknown. A magic mirror enabled the king to observe everything that happened in the world. Flying dragons, flying dragons, Preston John, flying dragons, Preston John, flying dragons carried men for long distances through the air. Prester John's flying dragons, King David's flying dragons carried men for long distances through the air. And a magic ring, Lord of the Rings, Solomon's ring, could make them invisible. Hmm, Solomon, Prester John, ring. A huge tower rose in the middle of the city, and there a wonderful magic stone was guarded day and night. Thomas regards all these legendary ideas from which Etchingbach drew so much of his material as hinting at the real existence of this who they're calling Asiatic World Center of Initiation. We're talking America. And as furnishing elements of the Templar secret Gnostic or secret doctrine, secret. We're only talking Preston John. The knightly orders, the knightly the knightly order's great western enterprise failed, but the vision lived and on and wove into its seductive thread through the revolutionary esoteric discourse of later Renaissance and Reformation circles. The early 17th century saw the publication of Francis Bacon, 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 Roger Bacon. And later, man, when we keep reading this, it's going to tell you specifically that, you know, Roger Bacon was the one giving him the drop and telling him. Well, there's another document that we got in, in the chat room, man. Man, so much drop. Literally saying that Roger Bacon was the one, you know, suggesting, you know, certain breeds when you get into uh, like the uh, like the bright copper dragons or the regal dragons, the ones that were bred. Bacon was the one breeding dragons. The reptile the Ethiopians eat is the dragons that get younger. Who was Preston John? He was 562 years old and going strong. Francis Bacon's posthumous work, New Atlantis. Atlantis is in which he set forth his utopia was an allegorical account embodying his conception of the ideal religious and scientific society, a perfect social state already foreshadowed by the medieval initiate orders and later by the Rosicrucians. Man, you get into, into some deep stuff when you start digging on this Atlantis. Bacon modeled his idea, New Atlantis, on Plato's Atlantis, as the name implies. Atlantis, Atlantis. Get in that library, man. Pull this book up called Ignatius Donnelly's Atlantis, the Antediluvian World. And they're going to show you some drop right away. This is presented to the libraries of the University of Toronto. Is it play play by William G. Oxtoby? Let's get it, man. We're just talking the copper, the copper dragon. Now you see this. This is a map of what? The profile of Atlantis. This is the bottom of the ocean. I know it's sideways. Turn your head to the left. Turn your head to the left. This is the bottom. The right is the bottom. The left is the top. All right. You see ocean level. Bottom of ocean. They're mapping the profile of Atlantis. Wow. Now focus on me, man. Focus on me, man. Do you see every time it peaks up to the top right here in the Bermudas? What's happening with the Bermuda Triangle or the Dragon Triangle? You see again where this Atlantis peaks up to Azores. Now Atlantis is here, right? At the bottom of the ocean, so-called. Or the waters are just risen so high from this flood right atlantis see all oh, this is atlantis all oh, this is a part of atlantis under the water this is the top you see how it peaks at azores and peaks at madero and peaks at the bermudas these are called islands today 
Those are not just islands. They are the top of Atlantis. These are the peaks of Atlantis. So when the water goes down, these are just the mountain peaks. These are just the tops. Atlantis is way down here, but it's still peaking above the water. Where? In places you call islands like Azores. Let's go to Azores. In Portugal, a beauty of the Atlantic Ocean. Atlantis, Atlantic, Azores. Remember, Azores peaks three times. It's a part of Atlantis. Come on, let's get this dismount. Look at Azores, man. Atlantis, man. Look at look at Atlantis. This is Atlantis. This is Atlantis. This is Atlantis. These are the This is Atlantis. These are the peaks, the top Look at all this land that's about to be revealed again, man. Wow. This is just the top of Atlantis. But what they're calling Atlantis after Atlas, we don't have to call it Atlantis after Atlas, do we? This is Earth. And how dope is that, man? Look at this, just peeking out, right? Just peeking out the water, right? Just peeking out. So they're having a good time, huh? Having a good time in Azores. Where else does it peak? Madaria. Madaria. Let's go to Madaria. I looked it up. Here's the images of Madaria. What do you see? The same damn thing. This is around Portugal. Remember the pillars of Hercules and the gates and all that? This is the part that fell. But this part is still peaking above the water, man. So you see Medora is the same thing. Beautiful, right? Same thing. Same thing. Atlantis, right? Beautiful, right? So we start from the wave. I mean, we're talking to Zoras. These are the peaks now that we're our our eyes are open. We have the profile of Atlantis. We can see clearly. Free Phoenix. Remember, Chef Candy dropped this book, man. The New World. We got this, you know, in that uh, Colbus Code and the Cloud Force series again. You know, what's, what, what's Koba talking about? What's Koba Pate talking about? Which means sky being in the language of these people. So that's not his real name. He said, my real name was never spoken before and I would not utter it now. I am the last of my kind. I am the dragon from the line of Doldes dragons, the flyers of the Boranos Mountains. We looked at Boranos, nothing. We look up Barbados, everything. So again, Horace Butler got that two-letter rule, and it's true. They they skip the letters or they take them out instead of Barranos or Barbados. All right, the B and the N. Let's go. Mountains in the high country of Pele. All right, so we got Barbados coming up. To be clear, I'm not just any dragon. I am the last of my kind. I have been transformed. I am now a symbol of truth, a vessel of origin and earth history. I am a conduit to the past and future. Wow. Free Phoenix. What did they say? I mean, they, they, they gave you the drop before leaving on the expedition to uh, Katie and Green Dragon. We made... I, I made a stop to see the country's most famous dragon in captivity, Phineas Fort Tryon National Tri Fort Tryon Park Zoo in Upper Manhattan, is home to Phineas, a 140-year-old Acadian green dragon that has lived in New York for over a century. We know how the Iroquois were hatching dragons in New York. We got that. Love to Miss D in the Copper Colored Awakening, and Miss D surfs the wave every night live, so she's dropping drop on us live. In 1857, P.T. Barnum acquired four Cadian Green Dragon hatchlings, 
which he placed in his American Museum. I think all museums are a cover up for dragons. That's why they got those big dinosaur bones everywhere. Those are dragon bones or replicas in New York when the museum burned down. So he put four green dragons. Barnum acquired four Acadian green dragon babies or hatchlings when the museum burned down. I wonder what happened. In 1865, two of the small dragons were killed. The remaining dragons were taken on tour with Barnum for over a decade. Do you think it's play play? In 1888, Barnum donated one of the dragons to the London Zoo. Do you think it's play play? But it was quickly, but it then quickly got sick and died in 1889. The last dragon, the last dragon. You got that glow? You got that glow? Show sure enough. Was donated to the New York Zoo in 1891 upon Barnum's death and named Phoenix, man. Shit, man, the last dragon. I am the last of my kind. To be clear, I'm not just any dragon. I'm the last of my kind. I have been transformed. I am now a symbol of truth, a vessel of origin. In Earth history, I am a conduit to the past and to the future. I was sent in exile nearly 6,000 years ago to live in the unnamed lands until my death. The Emperor Dragon in the Council of Drakes foresaw the rise of the powerful group of humans called the Black Robes. Man, so when you go back, man, I mean, even with the uh, Planet of the Apes, man, I mean, we dropped that in the chat. Man, the chat is amazing, man. And, you know, when you look up Koba in Planet of the Apes, it says he's a Barnabo dragon. Look up Koba, Planet of the Apes, it would say Barnabo. He's a Barnabo, an altered Barnabo. Barnabo, right? Barano's Mountains. Barnabo, okay. Barnabo, Barbados, Barnabo, Barano's, Barano's, Barnabo, Barbados. When we clicked on Barnabo, it says he's a pan. Can't make this up, man. Can't make this up. Bonabo, yeah, there we go. The Bonabo. Koba, we're just talking Planet of the Apes, man. You know that's about you already. They're getting smarter. The other people getting more animalistic, right? Koba was an altered Bonabo with a strong hatred for humans stemming from years of abuse and, abuse and neglect. He had a scar over his blind left eye and look for and look and looks more feral than the other apes held at the Gene Sis Laboratories. Love to Aqua Larissa for this. She says, look at the name of the laboratory. It's Genesis Laboratories. Gen Sis, Gen Sis, Genesis. Gen slash Sis, Genesis. Alright, he was liberated from captivity, free Phineas, because this dragon right here in this book, dropped by Chef Candy, is named Koba. That's how we got this drop. They call me Koba Pi Atai, which means sky being Koba. Barnabo, huh? Altered Barnabo. Click on Barnabo. Bonobo is a pan paniscus. Just start right there. They came from the same pan. 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 Ah. Ah, gonna make me scream. <laughs> Try to find his dog here, man. Panion. Pan? Who is Prester John? 432 to drop. Let's get it. 
We're just talking about healing do. Also called Raja here, Raja Chola. Maybe part 33 will get more on these Cholas, huh? Prester John the what? Panion. Pan? Prester John? The Panion? Emperor of Soli? Soli? Husband of Lady Hannah of Babylon? Alright, this is the Exilarchs during Babylonian captivity, the Israelites. Father of Solomon and the Exilar King David. Prester John is the father of Solomon and the Exilar King David. So it's a family of Davids, right? We're talking Prester John, the family of Davids. A what? Pan. And you look up Koba or Bonnebo and you have what? Pan. Koba. Pan. Get this dismount. I'm not just any dragon. I was sent into exile. The rise of the powerful group of humans called the Black Robes. Chef Candy just dropped on the Black Robes. And in order to protect the sanctity and future of Earth's creatures, they instructed me to perform Sirah Mortin, which is a, you know what I'm saying, like a, you know, whole like health, you know, we, we, we dug on that last time. You get it, man. But in other words, instead of like, you know, what I'm saying, saying that I've been in sin and here's my confessions and saying, here's my confessions. I'm in sin. This Sarah Martin literally means that you're without sin. And because you're without sin, all the information is stored into your bones. Look it up in my bones and in my very existence. Essence, I am now preserving this story because he is guilt free. He is hijack free. It is an entire chronicle of the earth and the rise of humans and also the extinction of the dragons. Don't forget this mythical kingdom of Prester John has flying dragons carried men for long distances through the air in a magic ring could make them invisible we're just talking about free and phineas phineas the dragon right okay and we're talking about these black robes so this dna codes there's dna codes in this phineas huh free phineas i am fifty-seven thousand years old but time is in fact relative for a dragon time is similar to that of earth's time slow and measured gradual and constantly evolving dragons evolve within their own lifetime we adapt to our surroundings but we do not breed as other species do our biology is unique our genes are not changed by chance mutation from one generation to the next because we do not conceive our young but rather we welcome them into life as members of the draconic order, the commencement of Dulian, no matter where from the earth they spawn. Eggs, no matter where from the earth they spawn. No matter where from the earth they spawn. The sprouting seed, love to urban reed. We're just surfing away. Black Robes. Black Robe was first published in 1885. The historical novel by Brian Moore said in New France is Canada. New France is Canada. America, we're talking. America in the 17th century. Its central theme is the collision of European and Native American cultures. Collision. Soon after the first contact, first peoples, first nation peoples historically called the French Jesuit priest Black Robes. The French Jesuit priests black, black robes because of their religious habit. These are the hijacks. What did Phineas say about that? A.K.A. Cobra. That he got to dodge the hijack of these black robes. Uh, the Azorne dragons. Wow. We just did with Azore. Now we got Azorne, huh? Wow. What's up with these black coat black robes? A powerful group of humans called the black robes, huh? And he's gonna get more into the black robes, man. He goes into the laws, conviction, sacrifice, deliverance, empathy, and protection. These five laws represent the unbreakable bond and the ultimate commitment of all dragons. A treaties with all living creatures. The earth 
in the infinite sky. Ha wa, ha wa, Mother Earth, and your wa. I beat it out, rock with my right hand, rock wa. I beat out the firmament, God of the sky, Mother and Father. Connor, the black robes. Connor was peering out the window trying to locate Noah. The streets were empty and he was nowhere inside. Yeah, of course, Jenny said, seeing the worry on Connor's face. It says that the black robes were the most powerful of the early human societies that they had isolated themselves in the Barrenos Mountains, which Cabell thought was located somewhere in Eastern Europe. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe. It says that they disappeared for a thousand years and then reemerged. Oh, they got trapped in the Caucasus by the Western European Moors, you mean? When they went to war with the dragons. When they went to war with the dragons. The dragon says that the black robes protected only their own wealth. Who does that sound like? Not the earth. This eventually led to the humans fighting against themselves over possessions. The dragon says that this is when avarice was born in the human heart. What the dragon said? What the dragon said, Connor said. What the dragon said, Connor said. I'm just telling you what it says. Apparently, the black robes purposely, purposefully created distrust. Purposefully created distrust among other humans. They began turning on each other. They also invented beliefs. Invented beliefs. Invented beliefs. Inception about powers beyond their knowledge of the earth. I don't know what this means exactly. I guess he means gods. So here comes their system. Connor was pacing between the window and the door. Any more about the black robes? It says the dragons became became a myth. And the black robes turned the dragons into dark magic. Let's get the dismount. It says the dragons became myth. And the black robes turned the dragons into dark magic. Which caused the other humans to fear the dragons. Fear. Now you're under a fear spell. And eventually even the memory of the dragons were considered dangerous to the humans on earth. So they turned them into dark magic to create a fear spell. Eye of a dragon just dropped some more man on the same book man. Left the eye of a dragon. Cobra side he had a lot to... Tell the old chief he rested his head into the grass next to East Essiwa. Essiwa, who's Essiwa? Let's see. His breath was warm and his massive chest expanded as he breathed like that of the bellows before the fire, long before the written histories of human written records of human history. He stated, In an age of prosperity and enlightenment, there were many dragons like me. Essiwa shivered as he adjusted his blanket tightly around his aging shoulders. Koba moved in closer. So Koba's the dragon hollering at Essiwa, his homie. And Essiwa leaned against Koba's warm belly. The frigid winds deflected off the massive body. Thank you, Koba, Essiwa said. My kin, Koba continued, along with all of Earth species, witnessed the arrival of the earliest humans into the old world. My kin witnessed the arrival of the first humans into the old world the home of my earliest ancestors you're in it america and we ex existed together we existed together peacefully me and my nagas for hundreds of years enjoying the earth's many bountiful splendors in the veil of my home this is until the end of the dragons cobra said sadly what happened to your kin they were purged from time, Koba said forcefully, defeated by a group of humans called the Black Robes, the Dragon Slayers. What happened in World War One? What happened to Nagasaki? Nagasaki, Hiroshima, what happened? And now my kind, the dragon of old, the dragons of old, they live only in my memory. I am the very last dragon, Essiwa. And, and soon I will be gone too. And I fear that dragons will remain nothing more than old fables and stories. We're just talking black robes, man. So get that drop. We're just talking Jesuit. We're just talking the energy they're talking about. There's a whole film on it. There's a whole film on it. Let's get this dismount. 
Wow. It's a great link I'm gonna drive right here called You know what I'm saying? The dragon and the phoenix in the Bible and the script. Many nations have legends of dragons and phoenix birds. The legends include portrayals of their spit of their parents, even though dragons and phoenix birds can no more be seen. According to legends, dragons and phoenix birds have flight capability or ability. The dragon's flight ability is not explained. European legend art shows dragons with wings, but Asian dragon art doesn't show wings. Asian art shows clouds and stars, stars, meteors, shooting stars when dragons fly in the sky. But there is no explanation of how they could fly. Dragon flight is a mystery. For dragons were massive animals of enormous size. Psalms 104 has a prophetic view of the new earth and dragons will live again. One of the Hebrew names for the dragon is Leviathan. Psalms 104, 24, 26. Love to Sister Larissa for a wonderful Leviathan drought that we got. Hawa has manifold. How manifold are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures, dragons. Yonders in the sea, great and wide, creeping things, creeping things. Innumerable are there, living things, both small and great. There go the ships and leviathan dragons that you formed to sport in it. Good. God told Jacob of his success in creating the dragons in the creation day of old, which confirms many legends. Can you draw out leviathan with a fish hook or press down its tongue with a cord? Can you rope its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? God created dragons. God created dragons so wonderfully that they are invulnerable to any attack by conventional weapons. They are invincible in combat. Job 41, can you fill its skin with harpoons or its head with fishing spears? Lay hands on it. Think of the battle. You will not do it again. Any hope of capturing it will be disappointed. We're not even, we're not even the gods overwhelmed at the sight, the dragon sight. Remember the etymology of dragon is seeing clearly or the deadly glance. No one is so fierce as to dare to stir it up. Dragons are evidently uncontrollable and fierce in nature. Job 41. Dragons are strong and handsome. I will not keep silence concerning its limbs or its mighty strength or splendid frame. Some say Leviathan is a crocodile because it has a crocodile's face. Who can open the doors of its face? There is terror all around its teeth. Man, so there's plenty of dragon drop, man. You know what I'm saying? Go get that drop. You know, again, get that book of Jubilees. You know what I mean? Because it's breaking down the whole seraphim, the orders, the high orders of angels, the first orders of... The orders of... Uh, the orders of... Uh, what's it say here? Sanctification. All the angels of presence and the angels of sanctification. These two great classes... He is hitting us to keep the Sabbath with him. So these two great classes keep the Shabbat with the Creator. With you, angels of presence and sanctification. Are these the dragons of presence and the dragons of sanctification? Another great drop by Eye of a Dragon. Dragons by Aloha. In the very beginning of Earth's development, before man stepped on her surface, the dragons were here. The angels were here. The dragons of creation, the angels of creation, came into the space allocated for Gaia or Earth and wove the elements of Earth, air, fire, earth, and water to create the physical plane. Do not mistake these creatures as being myths, for they were real. And powerful creative forces, they were immensely powerful beings. And simply through their presence, they set in motion the cycles that would later become the weather. They set in motion the cycles that would eventually become the weather. What does it say in Jubilee? You got the angels of presence, angels of sanctification. All right. On the first day, right, he created the heavens, which are above the earth, and the waters and all the spirits, spirits, angels, huh, which served before him, the angels, let's just say dragons of presence, dragons of sanctification, dragons of spirit of fire, and the dragons of the spirit of the winds, and the dragons of the spirit of clouds, and of the darkness, and of the snow, and the hail, and the air, and the hoar frost, the dragons of the winds, 
clouds, snow, hail. They were immensely powerful beings and simply through their presence they set in motion the cycles that would later become the weather patterns. Wind, snow, hail of the earth. They spiraled their bodies around and around until the pattern of creation was formed. When the plane dropped, so this whole earth plane dropped in vibration in later times, they slept. What happened to these dragons when they slept? When the vibration dropped, they became stiff and slept. It is as if the dragons created the landscape of the hills and mountains. So you see all these mountains looking like dragons or hills. It is no mistake that some of our mountain ranges resemble dragons because they slept and they will wake. There are many places on this plane where the dragons still sleep. This is the time for them to wake up. The dragons hold in their bodies the code on how to ascend planes, planes into the fifth dimension. There are many places of this, on this plane where dragons still sleep, but this is the time for them to wakey, wakey, wake up. The dragons are bridges of sorts, so they are a bridge. We're talking high orders of angelic energy that are bridges between above the barrier and what? Between the very high, what they're calling starry dimensions, but we know it's the unknown to them. The unknown Quicksilver, right? Dimensions of earthly realms. The dra So they're a bridge between the high realms and the earthly realms. They carry the information. The dragons have the ability to take very high information from the stars or the creator, right? From above the barrier and anchor it into the matrix. So they can come into the matrix like, uh, what's his name? In the, uh, in the matrix. You got Neo and Morpheus in them. So they go into the matrix to give what? Information to help wake the people up, right? The dragons have the ability to take very high information and anchor it into the matrix of the plane. Y'all get this drop, man. Y'all get this drop. Much of high for all your wonderful comments, man. And if I have more time, I'll read them. But I just want to put them up here, man. So y'all know, man. Link in the left. The frame of the shape of the matter and the spirit. We walk the wisdom and the order. Once again, the enemy collectively has perverted our scriptures.